Hello. Well, do you know what day it is today? It's a special day, isn't it? It's St Valentine's Day. I don't know. Did you get any Valentine's cards? Did you get any cards from somebody and you don't know who sent it? That's what used to happen with Valentine's Day cards. You would get up and there would be a card from somebody and you didn't know who it was because it was somebody who sent you the card who was too shy to tell you themselves. So they made a card and sent it. I've got a card here and it's sort of like a Valentine card. You can see that it has a lovely message on it. The message is, you are stronger and braver than you think and more loved than you will ever know. Now, I want you to look at that picture and who do you think is saying that to who? So, is the bear saying it to the girl or is the girl saying it to the bear? Because it could work either way, couldn't it? I'll show you. Let me tell you a story. Once upon a time, there was a bear who lived at the top of a very high mountain. And down at the bottom of the mountain was a lovely village. Oh, the bear so much wanted to go down and see what the village was like. But he was scared. He thought that maybe the people in the village would shout at him and push him away. Or they might, even worse, they might try and hurt him. So he stayed in his cave, lonely, all alone. And at night time, he used to come out from the cave and he used to howl like a wolf at the moon because he was so lonely. Because bears can make that sort of noise. But down in the village, actually, all the villagers knew about the bear. And sometimes when they were out in the forest, they could see the bear. And they thought, what a handsome lovely looking bear he is and he doesn't look as if he would harm anyone and they were really very fond of him and they wished that he would come and visit them in their village. Well one day a little girl said why don't we go and tell him that we would like him to come down and nobody was willing to do it so the little girl said well I'll go and she went all the way to the top of the mountain where she found the bear and of course because the bear was such a fraidy bear he hardly wanted to come out of his cave to see her come on said the girl come out and see me eventually the bear came out why don't you come down to the village asked the girl and the bear of course couldn't come down to the village because he didn't think anybody liked him so the little girl said you can be brave and come down and see us because you're stronger and braver than you think and you're loved more than you will ever know. So the bear did come down to the village and everybody was pleased to see him and after that he came down quite regularly. Now that's one story but what about this story? Once upon a time there was a little girl and it was a little girl who was afraid of everything. She was afraid that people wouldn't like her. She was afraid of going to school. She was afraid she would get things wrong at school. She was afraid that she wouldn't be able to do all the sports at school. And so she was really very sad. And she only had one friend, she thought. And her friend was a big brown bear. Now, she had made friends with the big brown bear when he was a tiny cub and she had looked after him because he had lost his mother and she had looked after him and cared for him and she kept him safe and all the people in the village thought she was wonderful because she was so caring but the little girl was so shy that she never found out that anybody knew what she had done. One day she went up to the bear and the bear could speak it was magic. And the bear said, why don't you go and make friends with the children in the village? And the little girl said, I'm not brave enough. They might not want to speak to me. And the bear said, you are stronger and braver than you think. 
and you're loved more than you will ever know. Now, which story do you think is the right one? I think they're both right. They could both be right. But if you looked at that picture, you wouldn't think, oh, the bear could be afraid. And if you look at the little girl, you might not think that she wasn't strong and brave. You see, when you look on the outside, remember last week? Remember the song we've just been singing? If you look on the outside, you don't know what things are like inside in people's hearts. But we know who does know that, and that's God. Now, we're going to start a new story about a new hero today. And funnily enough, it's someone that everybody would have looked at and not thought he was going to be a hero at all. Because from the outside, he didn't look like any kind of hero at all. So, sit back and we'll hear the story, the beginning of the story of a man called Gideon. So, let's set the scene for Gideon's story. You might remember that the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt and God had brought them to a promised land and they were living there. Now for a long time they went on living there and they went on loving God and they went on following God. But after a while they began to stop following God's rules and they began to stop remembering what God had done. And then for seven whole years they were raided by a tribe called the Midianites. They were in terrible trouble. The Midianites stole their crops, stole their animals, stole everything they could get their hands on. And they didn't just do that once. They would come at night time and they would steal everything and then go back to where they came from and the Israelites couldn't fight them. And the Israelites were really frightened and they had taken to living in caves and tents themselves. And then they suddenly remembered their God their strong God, and they turned to God and asked for help. And God, of course, had been waiting for them to turn back to him. So when they prayed and asked him, he sent a messenger, a prophet, to say, I will save you. I am the God who saved you out of Egypt and I will do it all over again. But you have to remember that I am the only God I am the one and only. Stop worshipping those statues. They can't do anything for you. That's why you've still had all this trouble. But if you turn back to me, I promise I have a plan to save you. And here's how that plan was going to work out. This plan was going to work out because Gideon was going to be used by God. Now Gideon, is not the sort of person that you would think was a hero when we see him first. He's hiding in a little ravine and he's trying to make his crops into flour, but he's hiding from the Midianites because he's so scared of them. And while he was doing this, squashing his wheat to make it into flour, an angel of the Lord came and sat down up underneath an oak tree nearby. Now, Gideon didn't know it was an angel of the Lord, so he got quite a surprise when the man underneath the oak tree said, Hail to thee, mighty warrior, the Lord is with you. Now the first thing Gideon said was, Well, how come the Lord is with us when all these awful things are happening? What is the Lord doing? And the angel of the Lord said, God is planning to save you, just like he did out of Egypt. And Gideon, you are going to be the mighty warrior who saves all your people. <laughs> Gideon burst out laughing. It can't be me, he said. I am the least important member of my family. And my family is the least important family in the whole of Israel. So I hardly think that I'm going to be a mighty warrior. Thank you very much. And the angel of the Lord said, well, you're not going to do it on your own. 
and you are going to be strong enough and brave enough to lead an army and rid Israel of this group of people, the tribe of the Midianites. In fact, in a way, the angel of the Lord said this, you are stronger and braver than you think and loved far more than you will ever know. That was the sort of message that God was giving Gideon. Well, Gideon thought, this is amazing. This sounds like a real message from God. So he said to the man, because he still thought it was a man, please, if this message really is from God, let me go and build an altar and, and don't go away till I, I come back. Of course, the angel of the Lord stayed exactly where he was. And Gideon came back with a little lump of stones and he put on his little lump of stones an altar. He put some bread and some meat and he was going to make a special sacrifice. And the angel of the Lord leant forward and touched the bread and the meat and it immediately burst into flames and the angel of the Lord disappeared. And Gideon suddenly realised that was no ordinary man he'd been looking at because he'd just been looking on the outside. He didn't know the inside, did he? And he realised that he had been in the presence of a real angel. And so he took that bundle of stones and he made them into an altar, a special altar to remind him that he should always worship God. And he called it an altar of peace, which was a lovely thing to call it because he didn't have much peace in his time at the moment, did he? But he got himself ready because he thought if God wanted to use him, he had better get ready for the next part of his story with God. And the next part of his story with God is for next week. You'll find out what it was that Gideon did next once he realised that God really was with him. And you know, just like the song, Gideon didn't look much on the outside, but God had seen his heart. And God knew that his heart was true and was ready to follow him and was ready to be brave. So God picked a superhero, even if his superhero didn't know that he was one. But let's see what happens next week. <laughs>